What's your craziest story related to MREs? I got in a fist fight in the back of a Bradley fighting vehicle over a packet of freeze-dried strawberries. I don't know if they still have them, but they had in many MREs, packets of freeze-dried fruit. There were little squares about 3 by 3 inches and a half inch thick. You were supposed to add water to reconstitute them. Nobody ever did. You just ate them as is. They came in peaches, pears, and the holy grail. Strawberries. Strawberries were rare. It seemed like you might get one pack in every three crates of MRE. And they didn't come in the same MRE twice. Any soldier that is a field dweller learns what each MRE has, down to the finest of detail. The best you could do with strawberries is pick one you knew had fruit. The strawberries were delicious. One day I got a pack. I tenderly sat it aside for desert. While I took pleasure in dining on spaghetti with meat sauce, number 11 or 8 at the time if I recall. I anticipated the sweet explosion of strawberries soon to come. That's when my so-called buddy came in from out of a cold Korean winter, picked up my strawberries and said, awesome you found my strawberries. I responded politely with, eat my fucking strawberries and I will kick your ass, seduce your mama and marry into your family so I can kick your ass on holidays. He smiled and proceeded to attempt to open my only reward for the last 30 days of freezing and sweating and being generally uncomfortable. I punched in the chest, knocking the wind out of him. It was then on. We fought tooth and nail for at least five minutes. The guys in the turret, hearing the scuffle down below, closed the turret shield door so as not to be disturbed. There is a bit of a Morlock and Eloy relationship between J.A.F. Oss down in the hole and turret dwellers. Eventually, I was able to get a solid fish hook hold on him and he relented. My strawberries were a bit busted up. But, combined with the taste of victory in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they were even that much sweeter. When the MREs first came out, I was in Korea. We had a mascot in the maintenance section, a dog named Port Call. That dog would eat anything you fed to him. He would eat American or Korean food, no matter what was in it. At least we thought he would eat anything, until we offered him these. Four francs that tasted like rubbery versions of those little canned Vienna sausage that you see in American convenience stores. Their nickname was, the Four Fingers of Death. When your mascot will eat everything but the MRE dogs, you start to think the nickname might be right. It was a cool windy night on the airfield in March of 1984. We were standing in full gear with all our equipment near the C-141 cargo plane that would take elements of my battalion. 1st of the 503 Infantry, 101st Airborne Division, to Panama for a month of training at the Jungle Operations Training Center at Fort Sherman. Just prior to boarding the aircraft we were handed these strange new brown packages and told that these would be the only chow provided until well after we arrived in Panama. What? No good old-fashioned sea rations? What about my can of apricot halves and heavy syrup? The John Wayne bar, the spaghetti and meatballs, the foul-tasting ham and eggs? We were told that we had to make do with this new type of ration. The army had decreed, in its infinite wisdom, that these new meals were a better option, with new entrees, easy to open packages, and best of all, new desserts. Some of us were open to trying new things, others were more reluctant. However, we all had reason to be concerned about our health and physical comfort during the next few hours of that long flight when we read the warning that was written on each and every package. Not for in-flight use. We question the wisdom of providing us an in-flight meal which specifically warns against consuming it in flight, but alas, our protestations fell upon deaf ears. While the army's motto is often claimed to be hurry up and wait, some on that flight were unfortunately unable to wait and suffered the consequences. True story. So, the MREs the Singapore Armed Forces provides have a significantly large portion of sugar involved in the dessert pack. I used to trade them away all the time because I prefer to have solid food than an unadulterated mix of pure sugar with flavoring, thanks. But the biscuits are relatively difficult to eat while on the move because you drop hunks on the floor if you're not careful. We were also running seriously low on water at this time, and the biscuits are very dry, and hard, without. On one particular march as a specialist cadet from location X to location Y, I started cracking open the sugar packets, just because my mouth would salivate on eating them, and I needed the energy, and the water. The problem was, apparently one of our instructors couldn't read a map, and he ended up taking us on a little journey about 3 kilometers longer than he expected us to. Without water resupplies, in full gear, without rationing water, in Singapore, because he didn't expect the little side trip. 
as a result we were all seriously, seriously dehydrated. I went through all the sugar packets one by one with my everything starting to gum up. Heart beating faster, but blood moving more sluggishly. By the time we finally arrived at the next navigation point, it felt like sand was moving through my blood vessels. I highly suspect that at that point I had more sugar in my blood than water. The reflux tasted sweet and slightly lemony. Truly unpleasant feeling. I didn't touch processed sugar for about a week after returning from that exercise. My favorite story about MREs is the tale of the MRE bunker. In Iraq we were told only to use the door of our shelter that faced away from the fence line. The place had been hit by mortar attacks before and indeed we could see the patched holes in the ceiling and the bits of fragmentation around the walls. The only reason the insurgents stopped attacking it is that US forces stopped using it. Well one day we got word that we needed to pack up and move. The enemy had learned we were using that structure again and was planning to attack it. Of course in typically army fashion, they gathered everyone up inside that building, then sat there for four hours before moving. So for a while we actually made things worse by pulling all our personnel into the target area. Anyway, we had to find a new place to sleep. Our new digs were very tight on space. Cots were practically on top of each other. We could only keep what we needed for that day and the next in that building. Most of our stuff stayed at the old structure. Then we had to deal with work. There was no room in our sleeping area to get anything done so all the shops had to work out of our old structure. However, the commander felt that it wasn't safe for us to be in there without protection. We were ordered to build a bunker. Unfortunately, we had no sandbags, how that happens on a decent sized fob is beyond me. Anyway, someone made the call that we would still build the bunker but we would build it out of MREs. So that's what we did. We took all of our available MRE boxes and we built a wall around our work and radio area. Don't laugh, those chocolate brownies could probably stop an RPG. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button. When the stories run out, make sure to flip the tape over to continue. Adios amigos.